Gate, War of Two Worlds Part 1. V07, Chapter 72 Carlin. Written by P.W.O. Falcon. Fort Alnus, Sharp Quarters. August 26, 2025. Dear Marita, I know the arena of war is not your within your domain however I please ask you again to protect my new father from harm. Please use your strength to cast an orb and protect him and the rest of the rangers from harm from this world. Please, I don't want to lose anyone anymore, Selina said. She opens her eyes and looks up. She is sitting on Sharp's bed, only waking up an hour ago. This is no use. I do not have a shrine to worship. There is no way that Marita will ever listen to my voice. I haven't properly paid since, she said as she begins to think. She thinks about the second time she was in Italica, right before the failed peace mission to Sidera. At the worst time, she bled for the first time on what Sarah calls a period. This means she is now a woman and according to the cult prissiest back in Edras, she must prostitute herself to be blessed by Marita. She remembers after that she was cuddling on Sharp's lap afterward, fast asleep. She never felt safer in her life. But it seems like every time something is going on with her, it seems like she ends up complicates the situation. But now that he is gone, she did not realize how much she missed leaning her head on his shoulder and watching his silly shows and him making up stories about random things. This has become an issue while living with these people. Sharp and everyone else do not want her to prostitute herself for her god, thinking the act is wrong. Lele helped explain it to her, summing it up that they want her to wait for someone she loves. While she likes that idea, she is scared that she will not be connected and touched by Marita. The culprissiest were clear about Marita will. After taking a deep breath, she gets up and pulls off her blue with stars pajamas and head to the bathroom. Getting in the shower, she knows that she only has a limited amount of time before the warm water goes cold. On the wall, there is this black mark that leads up to the ceiling from a magic blast. That happened when Lele nearly destroyed the bathroom after the Sidera raid. The water starts to flow out of the shower spout. The first time she did that, she remembers getting really scared by the shower spout. Never in her life she ever has seen the waterfall from a device like this, it being pushed by air or something in the pips. Now, it seems natural, normal. Once she gets out, she grabs a towel and covers herself. She walks over to the sink. Loose or Meliwa Ma says Sue, Selina begins to sing to herself softly, a song her mother once sang to her, about love and family. As she sings, she opens the drawer and takes out a brush and a tampon. I hate when this happens, thank you, Sarah. She begins to tear up a bit, now thinking of her dead mother. But then realizes that Sarah has been helping her out recently. She has been overly nice and does not understand why. Now that she thinks about it, she has not done anything nice for Sarah but has taken time out of her busy schedule to watch her. Everyone seems to be stopping everything just for her. It is okay Selena, it is okay. Selin said to herself as she wipes the tears from her eyes. Once she finished cleaning herself up in the bathroom, she walks back to the bed. Once there, she grabs the duffel bag on the ground and sits it on the end of the bed. She adjusts the towel and begins looking through the bag. What do I want to wear today? A dress or a skirt today? What about this? She asked herself as she looks through all the clothes she brought over. She picks up this sundress but the tosses it aside. Then she grabs this skirt and then a blouse. Again, tosses them to the side. As she digs into her bag, she suddenly stops and looks up to the ceiling. She thinks about the other day at the bar, being picked on by some of the other kids and then dealing with that strange bunny lady. The bunny was very scary, able to discover her deepest secret without any effort. I don't want to go outside. I just want to hang out here. That is when Selina heard her cell phone ring, she struggled to find it. Come on, where are you? She mumbles as she runs around sharp quarters. She tried to stay in her assigned quarters while everyone is gone, sharing a room with Rory and Lele. Being in there alone just made her feel more alone. Being here in his room has made feel a bit better. This phone was given to her from Sharp back on Earth, to help stay in connect while they're in on Alnus. Sarah has helped her figure out how to use the device. 
According to Sarah, if she is in a range of these cell towers, she could communicate with people. She finally finds her phone on, which was between the sofa cushions. Her phone has this pink case around it with this skinny heart on the back of it. Hello? She asked. Selena. This is, Jaw. Sharp, can you hear me? Sharp asked. The single seems to be weak as there is some static. Hearing his voice shocks her. She was not expecting to hear from his while they're off at war. She struggles to find the proper words to say. Ah, hi, yeah. This is her. Is that you Jack? I mean sharp. She said slowly, stumbling a little. She then can hear some chuckling coming from him. Yes, it is Selena, I only have a little time. Skipping the boring details, Alicia was able to boost the single for this call. Sharp said through some static. As she listens, she does not care how right now or at all, simply happy that she can talk with him. Okay, that is fine. I thought you would be fighting right now. There is a short delay in his response. About to, can't go into details. Forget about the war, how are things going there? Sharp said. She understands, he likes to keep his secrets. She always wonders if that is because that is who he is or is because of his job. Being the one in charge, maybe you can keep secrets from people. She begins to think about what has been happening. There was her dealing with the local children and Taiyul. The more she thinks about that the more she decides that it is better as a secret. However, she has enjoyed her new Nariko and he did say to make some friends. Well, do you remember Nariko? The girl you saved from Prince Zorzal? She asked with energy. Yes Selina, I remember her. Is everything okay? Sharp asked. His tone shows he is wondering why she brought her up. Yes, everything is okay. We are friends now and have been hanging out together. She has even been helping me to read when she has time, which only been a few sessions, but it has been fun. I have been struggling with some words, for some reason I just cannot pronounce them right. Like Pacific. I don't mean the ocean but for some reason, I can't say it right. I am trying really hard, but it is really hard and. She said before being interrupted by Sharp. Selena, take a breath please, Sharp said chuckling. That is when she realizes that she was rambling. That surprises her as she usually stays quiet. It is probably because she feels nervous and could not stop herself from talking. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. She starts to say, beginning to ramble again. Selena. It is okay. I am calling just to check up on you. We have a little time so, yeah, Sharp said, sounding a little unsettling himself. Look, I am glad you and Nariko are friends now. She needs a friend, so I am proud of you. Hearing him say that makes her feel great inside. No longer feeling as nervous as before, she can focus on what she likes to say besides trying to cramp everything out at once. Thank you, yeah. We became fast friends. Something about a pinky friend. I don't know. You people are confusing at times. She finds there's still some static and delays in his response. She wonders what it is like out there fighting in the war. Away from everything they love, in the cold mud. Any minute that could be their last. That is when she hears a faint chuckle over the fun. Well, I will tell everyone that. They would like to hear that something good coming out of that mess. Yes, I think it's because we are, well, never mind. She stops herself from saying. She was about to say that they are similar, both suffering from similar situations. She did not want to finish, not enjoying the thoughts and did not want to worry him. I mean we been. Hanging out at your place. She has been showing more of your picture shows, if that is okay with you. She realizes that deep down inside she wants his approval and not wanting to lose it. Cool, that is fine. You two can stay there want to watch TV as long as you want. As long as you continue on your studies. The last thing I need is Sarah giving me another lecture. He said and then pauses for a moment. Just don't make a mess in my quarters. A mess. She mumbles. She then looks around the room. 
she sees his bed that has not been made since they left. Her earth clothes are all over the place. Snacks bags and wrappers everywhere. One of the warmer blankets is over the couch. Nariko and she have been using his warm blanket to watch some cartoon show. Over in the corner is a bowl of what they call popcorn, some of it spilled on the floor. Pillows everywhere, she has found that Sharp likes blankets and pillows. Since she moved in, there are clean and dirty clothes everywhere. There's some empty soda cans on the tables. Selina, Sharp said in his commanding tone. That is when she realizes that she did not answer his questions. I'm sorry, I didn't understand you over that strange sound in the background. The static I think it's called. Right. Okay Selina, static. Just make sure you two don't wreck my place when you are having fun. What have you two been watching? Nothing inappropriate correct? Well, it is about this student girl who goes back in time and commands this power demon cat boy. It was funny when she said sit and he falls on the ground. She said with some amusement. Wow, that sounds like fun. Sounds like you're enjoying it. Sharp replied. Wait, sorry, but I have to go. Alicia telling me the drone is, too, far. Sharp said as the single get weaker before going out. Wait. I want to say. I love you. She forces herself to say before the single goes out. Knowing that Sharp did not hear it. Once the conversation is over, she sits her phone down on the interesting looking couch. She takes a lot around and sees the mess she created over the past few days. For some strange reason, she begins to feel sad. All she wants to say is that she loves him and happy that he is in her life now and that she does not want to go anywhere. More importantly, she wants to hear it from him. That is when she remembers that star necklace, he gave her. She rushes through the small apartment, she gets to the desk in the room. She reaches down and picks up her beautiful eight-pointed star necklace. She remembers Sharp giving her this gift. He said this star helps lost souls find their way home. While she likes that story and meaning behind the star, to her she sees everything good that has happened since being freed by those slave traders. It has become a symbol for her that Sharp loves her and thinks about her. The phone call just confirms that feeling, otherwise he never would have done either. Feeling warm and happy again, reliving the happy memories of what her new father has done. She puts on the necklace, not wanting to lose it and decides to clean up later and walk over to the couch and sit down snuggling up in the blanket. Okay, so Noriko said I should watch Toy Story. She said out loud. Alnus Food Market. August 26, 2025. This isn't a bad sandwich, I still don't know what this yellow-looking tomato is but it's tasty. Sarah Rose said as he finishes half of her strange-looking BLT sub-sandwich. Not many people were happy when the State Department put an imperialist in change of Alnus economy both NATO personnel and Alnus citizens. Recently a lawyer's J.W. Fremis took the Commerce Department, but the economy has improved. An official exchange between the currency from our world and this world, allowing the soldiers and contractors to pay for goods in Alnus besides bartering. Right now, it is her lunchtime and besides staying at headquarters, she wanted to get some air. Besides, she needed a break from the office after learning about his commander going off on another rescue mission. He has no idea how much paperwork gets added when the goes on these side missions, good intentions or not. That is when a thought appears. She has had the chance to talk to his former teammates, the ones that are still alive through email. The impression she has gotten from them seemed like they were crazy. Professional, but crazy. That means he knows that going off mission results in the extra work which means all of this is intentional. As she loses herself in the mind game, she feels this brush by her side. Looking down she sees these kids run by. That is when she notices something is missing from her purse. Hey, you brats. Get back here. She yells as she starts chasing them. The kids are laughing as they run. They rush down the block and take a left down this alleyway. As she gets close, she sees this intense wind blows out of the alley, tossing the kids out. The three kids all fly out and land on their tears. She stops and watches, amazed at the strange anomaly she just witnesses. What the? That is when Corporal Mayute walks out of the alleyway. 
What did I tell you? What are you three doing this time? My ute, thank you for stopping them. They stole my phone. Little bastards. She said as she walks over to my ute side. Ah, I will take care of it, my ute said and then walks over to one of the boys. She grabs his arm and forces him to let go. Now all of you. Bugger off. Stat out of trouble. The three kids get up and rush off. Mayute walks over to her and hands her phone. Here you go, Lieutenant. Thank you and I'm off the cloak. Just Sarah, please. I don't like the formal when off the cloak. Sarah said. But why are you letting them go like that? Mayute looks back at the kids and then back at her. What do you want me to do? There are kids. They are just bored since you people placed limits on child labor. They have nothing else to do but steal. I'm not going to toss them in a jailhouse just for that. She stands there and listens to what Mayute said. She must admit, she didn't think about any of that. That makes her think back to when Selena showed her Sharp's broken tablet, the one she was using for her education. It took nearly an hour to make Selena stop crying. Poor thing, she's so afraid of losing approval. If we knew some people thought being an Edron is a bad thing, we would have made better preparations. Now she does not want to leave sharp quarters, only wanting to spend time with her new friend. At least there is that going for her. Now that she looks at it through Mayute perspective, now she wonders if these kids are just bastards or just bored as Mayute claims. This seems to be a problem that is only getting worse. You know, I didn't think of it like that. Still, we can't just let them running around like that. She comments. Yeah, but it seems your people are busy fighting the war, Mayute replied and then think. Forget about it. Yeah, I guess. Selena just having a hard time, being bullied a lot recently, she responds. I am sorry, she is an adorable girl. She helped me out recently with these traders who came into town. Another slave group, thinking they could sell people here for some quick wealth. One of the guards was going to stab me, but she saw it and warned me. When she finds her backbone, she can be loud. Mayute said. Yeah. I get why but she is like that. I don't know what to do about it, she said. Mayute can see the stress on Sarah's face. Hey, let's drop this. I know this sweet new stand that just opened. It sounds like her food is heaven. She begins to think of what the siren military policewomen said. Even though she just had a sandwich, it might be fun to check out this new place. It might be fun to take Selena there. Maybe when Jackson gets back from the front lines those two could have a good time, and maybe her in there somewhere. Thinking about a boy? Mayute said in a cheeky tone as she elbows her in the arm, toying with her. I know that smile. Realizing that Mayute just read her like an open book, she shots her a glare. Shut up you. Oh, so cute. Let's go. Mayute said and then walks away. She takes a deep breath and smile, knowing Mayute is just picking on her. She follows her as they both head to this new sweet and bakery stand. How have you been Mayute? It seems you have fit well into the MPs. She asked her. Oh yeah, I love it. For the first time, I feel like I am doing some good. Putting my skills to some real use. Mayute said very quickly, already knowing her answer. Alness has been the best place I have ever left. First time I feel safe, that I can help people and repay for my second chance. I just love everything about this place. Even the little bastards? She said, saying that in a cute tone. Mayute looks to Sarah happily. Even the little bastards. They are just bored but living free. They know they are safe. If this was in any other city, most of them out has been taken by something for their own use. Sarah had to nod to that. The only time she has left Alnus has been to Italica and Sidera. Between Selena and Nariko, she got to see a clear example of what Mayute is saying. She can tell based on my ute tone, she is used to that way of life. She finds it funny, use there are unsafe places in the United States and the Western world, it is still safer than most places on earth. 
Being in an unsafe place is unnormal for her while it is the opposite of her siren friend. But why? What are your plans here? Are you planning to stay here for the long run? She asked, curious now. She finds it interesting how these people will adapt to the changing world, Alnus becoming the new center of influence of this world. Well, there's still issues here I like to fix. Since Rory Mercury has taken an interest in protecting this town, I like to help protect it myself. Allow it to become a second chance for others, just like what happened with me. And after that, maybe start a family here once this place is fully up and going and I am not needed as much anymore. Mayute said as she has thought about this. She is impressed by what Mayute said. Looking away thinking about how committed Mayute is to Alnus. She sees this as her future family home and wants it too great for them. That makes her think about her future desires. She loves being a ranger, maybe not as glorious as being on the front line but everyone has a role in the war machine. But she does want more out of life, never intending to go full career in the army. Coming from a conservative family, family traditions are particularly important to her. As she walks, taking another turn down a street. She sees mostly happy people around. There is this positive vibe in this town atmosphere. With some time, this place could be a great place to raise a family. It has that frontier feeling like during the Wild West, just this time with tanks as protection. This place still has a long way to go but she likes how Mayute thinks. You are right Mayute. Thank you, I see Alnus in a whole new way now. She responds. I am? I thought I was just a silly siren, Mayute said and then gains this evil smirk. I take it you're thinking about your boss. She intentionally drags out the last part, wanting to torment Sarah. Before Sarah could respond, the radio on Mayute's side goes off. Corporal Mayute, we have a 6-4 November at the East Gate. They are requesting aid over. Mayute grabs her radio. Roger that base will head over ASAP. Mayute then looks to her. I am sorry but duty calls. But that place is right this street. Maybe we can get a bit to eat. Just us girls. She reaches down and grabs her baton and smirks. Now to bust some heads, best part of the job. She watches as Mayute rushes away. Note to self, so not piss her off. She then looks down the street, realizing she is alone now. I guess I will continue, I am already here. As she heads to the sweet bakery stand, Mayute gave her a lot to think about. She likes how invested she is in the success of Alnus and the motives behind it. When she walks up, she sees this beautiful white stand. There are three rows of all these different kinds of baked goods, some from Earth and others from this world. Wow, these look great, she said. Why thank you, ma'am. The women say. Hearing someone speak, she looks up and sees this lovely lady. She seems to be in her fifties however she still looks young. Not just with her figure but her skin and personality radiating off her. She is not human but a humanoid fox, the first she has seen so far. Her hair is this beautiful goldish color. Why hello, I am sorry, but you have beautiful hair. She said, could not help herself. The fox women giggle and wave her off with her hand. Oh, please stop. I am just a baker. I take it you get that a lot. She responds, knowing deflection when she sees it. Well, not to brag. Now, what can I do for you? The fox women say. She looks back down and then back at the fox women. Well, my siren friend wanted me to check this place out. She said you had amazing sweets and I wanted to see for myself. Why thank you, let me give you a sample. The fox women said. She reaches down and grabs this biscuit looking bread that is covered in this purple frost. Here you go, by the way, my name is Carlin Deolo. Thank you. My name is Sarah Rose, 1st Lieutenant of the U.S. Army, 75th Ranger Regiment. She replied. Sorry, Habit. That is fine. I find your people fascinating. So strange and different but much more honorable than the Empire, or even most rulers of this world. Carlin said. Why thank you, again. She said and then takes a bit from the frosted biscuit. 
Damn, that is great. I have to bring Selena here. Selena? Is she your daughter? Such a beautiful name. Carlin said with a motherly tone. Hearing that nearly made her choke back up that piece of biscuit. It sounded so strange hearing someone say that. Selena, being her daughter. While she likes that idea, it just sounded strange because of the context. She had to stop herself from saying yes and find the proper words to respond with. Well, no. It is an interesting story. I am kind of watching over her while my boss is off to war. She said, not knowing how to explain the situation. After all this time, she realizes that she never actually thought of how to explain all of this. I am sorry, I did not mean to intrude. I just thought she was yours on how you said that. Carlin said. She thinks about that but then notices this fox woman named Carlin leans over her stand. It looks like she is sizing her up. I notice you didn't say father. Is she adopted? Carlin asked. Well, not yet. My boss Jackson Sharp saved her from slave traders when we first arrived in this world. Since then, he has pretty much taken that role, he is just dragging his feet like always. She explains to him. Hearing that summary, Carlin begins to laugh. Amazing. Two different worlds and yet men seem to be all the same. Willing to go off to war and fight demons and conquer lands. But the minute they meet a pretty set of eyes, they fall flat on their heads. Hearing that, she could not help herself but to laugh. Oh God, I love you. So funny and so true. Sharp, a special ops war hero, fought and lead through some intense battles and literally laughed at death when facing Talin but then gets scared of a commitment. Yeah, all the same. But why are you watching her? Are you sure he wants to take her in? Carlin asked, calming herself down from the laugher. Yes, he does. When they are together, they are like a clue. You should see her eyes, it is so adorable. She adores him so much. While he is off fighting the Empire, I have been watching over her, so he doesn't have to worry. She explains. As she finishes, she can see this smirk on this fox woman's face. She ends up confused by the smirk. That is nice of you to help them. Here, it takes a free biscuit. There are not enough people like you. Carlin said as she hands another one to Sarah. Thank you. Tell me about you, I do not think I have seen you around. Are you new in Alness? She asked. Well yes, I am. I am from the West. I lived in a small town and I kept hearing about these newcomers and how different they were. I heard many different stories, some more extreme than others, but I wanted to come and see for myself so here I am. Carlin explains in a cheerful tone. Wow, you came all the way from there. That must have been an interesting journey. Selena is from the west. From Edras. She comments. Edras, now that is far away. How did the god she end up way out, oh never mind. You told me already. Carlin said. Yeah. Empire took her from there and brought here. From what she said the family was murdered and was brought here for some sick prick. There is some deep bad blood between the Empire citizens and Edrons. She has been picked on by kids in town. Don't really know how to fix it. She said, letting out what has been bothering her. Hearing that, Carlin sits up and thinks on the matter. I have noticed the children running around more than usual. I was surprised that you people don't have them work or something. Labor laws. We allow them to help with that their parents are doing but with limits. The press will have a field day if we allow child labor. She responds, slightly getting tired of having to explain that all the time. What do you mean by the press? Carlin asked, confused by the term. Nickname for news. It is kind of old, do not worry about it. It would be embarrassing in our world. She responds. I see. Politics, great everywhere. Let us see, what do children do in your kingdom then? Carlin asked. My country isn't a kingdom. It is a republic. Anyway, children their age are in school. 
a place where they get educated like learning how to read, write, history, language and much more. She said and stopped, collecting her thoughts. There has been a talk by some of Alna's citizens about establishing one. The problem has been that the founding refugees of Alnus were farmers, not teachers. Why don't you people build a school and teach the children, Carlin asked. Well, that was a topic in the State Department but that went nowhere. They are too busy helping Italica get back on their feet. The military is busy fighting the empire right now, it seems like they are putting up a real fight this time. She explains. Then why don't you do it? Carlin states. Hearing that almost makes Sarah throw up. What? You are joking, right? There is no way I could do something like that. Carlin would laugh at Sarah's response. Give yourself more credit. You speak well, you clearly have the heart and desire. You are already helping one of the children. It does not have to be all day, based on our short interaction I think you could do great. I bet others would help so don't think you would be alone. As she listens to Carlin's reasons, she thinks more deeply about the idea. Mayut said that she is in the Alnus military police to help make the town better so she could start a family here. That is an idea she is starting to like, admiring Mayut for that. While she does not like to publicly talk about it, she doses like sharp and hopes maybe one day to get married. That probably would mean Selina would be her daughter through marriage. She begins to think about how she would set up a school. The more she thinks about it, the easier it seems. It would not be like a normal school back on earth, it probably is more like a home school thing. A few hours a day would just be needed. Some of the mothers here in town would probably like to help. She looks at the fox women, starting to get behind the idea. I will have to think about it. My first duty is the army so I would have to figure a way around that, if I do this. Well, this has been fun, thank you. You are welcome. I see a lot while standing here. I could always bake some goods for the kids. Bribe them a little. Carlin said with a cheerful motherly tone. That actually happened in one of my classes in high school. Long story. She comments, chuckling a little. Well, it was nice meeting you. Welcome to Alnus, hope you stay here for a while. Thank you for the lovely chat. I really enjoyed it. Please bring the girl with you next time. I would love to meet her. Carlin said. I will, I think she will love your sweets. Sharp has been a bad influence on her and now she loves sweets. She said and took a deep breath. I guess all girls love sweets. She finishes with a smile. She waves goodbye, needing to get back to the office. She waves goodbye to Carlin, happy to see this new baker in Alnus. Always nice to see good people moving in here.